Chapter 5. There was also a man named Ananias, who, with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, but he claimed it was the full amount. His wife had agreed to this deception. Then Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished, and after selling it, the money was yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men wrapped him in a sheet and took him out and buried him. About three hours later his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied. That was the price. And Peter said, How could the two of you even think of doing a thing like this? Conspiring together to test the spirit of the Lord. Just outside that door are the young men who buried your husband, and they will carry you out too. Instantly she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and all others who heard what had happened. Meanwhile, the apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. No one else dared to join them, though everyone had high regard for them. And more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came in from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. The high priest and his friends, who were Sadducees, reacted with violent jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So the apostles entered the temple about daybreak and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, along with all the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, The jail was locked with the guards standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with the news that the men they had jailed were out in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested them, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would kill them if they treated the apostles roughly. Then they brought the apostles in before the council. Didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name? The high priest demanded. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about Jesus, and you intend to blame us for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by crucifying him. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this to give the people of Israel an opportunity to turn from their sins and turn to God so their sins would be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. At this, the high council was furious and decided to kill them. But one member had a different perspective. He was a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was an expert on religious law and was very popular with the people. He stood up and ordered that the apostles be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Then he addressed his colleagues as follows. Men of Israel, take care what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago there was that fellow Zudus, who pretended to be someone great. About four hundred others joined him, but he was killed and his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He got some people to follow him, but he was killed too, and all his followers were scattered. So my advice is, leave these men alone. 
If they are teaching and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is of God, you will not be able to stop them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. The council accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and had them flogged. Then they ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. The apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer dishonor for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and in their homes, they continued to teach and preach this message. The Messiah you are looking for is Jesus.